I definitely think he knows he's different, but understanding what role autism plays in that is going to be a difficult conversation. I don't think he necessarily feels bad about it or feels sorry for himself. Um, generally, he's a pretty happy-go-lucky kid. Mm -hmm. Kids, even before a year, start to babble, and Brandon didn't even babble. He was just silent unless he cried. As he progressed, we still had no speech, and that was really kind of a huge red flag for us, was that um, he wasn't saying anything. No words, no sounds, nothing. In the meantime, we were having some more tantrums and really difficult behavior. He was difficult to take out in public. We kept adding therapies, and so we started with speech, and then we added OT, occupational therapy, and then we added feeding therapy, yes, and then we added um, the Children's Autism Project here. So for a time, he was essentially doing four different therapies. But there comes a time where we can't do it all anymore, and we have two other kids who are now in activities. Carter plays basketball, Jaina does dance, and there's a lot of guilt where am I doing enough and trying to balance all three of them at the same time. Brandon is obsessed with Mario, Mario Brothers, Super Mario. He loves every Mario game, and that's been an interest of his for a really long time. And if we let Brandon, he would play video games all day, every day. And so we work on rotating different activities throughout our day so that he gets some time with the electronics, but then also has time to go outside or read or cut paper or some of the other things that he likes to do. Let's do some scooter. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah? Take it anymore. Oh, really? Is that rough? Yes. Yes. How about, tell you what, we do a little bit of chalk and you can sit and also see Super Mario. You want to do it on the driveway? There's no sun. So you don't have to worry about getting sweaty. Okay, what do you think? You want to go find some chalk? Ooh. Green scene? Yeah. Yeah. What's green scene? It's kind of like a mix, right? With green and yellow? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Can we go back in? Yeah. Not yet. You're doing a good job. I need a timer now. Okay. Uh, no timer yet. What do you think? After this chalk? Maybe after the chalk. Middle school and high school are tough socially for anybody. And for him, the gap will get wider as kids start to be interested in movies and music and things like that. And, you know, interested in boys and girls. And he's not going to have those interests. He's still going to be playing Mario, probably. And so um, friendship is really hard. And that's a concern I have for when he's an adult, too. <gasps> Being the parent of a special needs child is a, a huge stress on mm -hmm. day on day to day living. Right. Um, huge stress on relationships with uh, ourselves, each other, uh, with uh, friends outside of our family. Yep. <laughs> which makes us a very tight and close knit family. It does. And, well, there's a lot of love mm -hmm. between the five of us, but uh, it doesn't come without its challenges. Yeah. Oh. What color? Green. Green? I don't have any green. The Children's Autism Project here really though, I mean, has changed our lives. I don't know where Brandon would be if we have not spent the past five and a half years here. This is X. 
will ask for a break if someone is allowed. Perfect. An area that Brandon really struggles with is understanding why people engage in social behavior and especially why they engage in behavior that he doesn't like. So when Brandon here is a baby screaming in a public location, he will get frustrated and attempt to yell at the baby and tell it to stop crying. He doesn't understand that they're not out to get him. And so we do a lot of perspective taking on why is this person upset? How is your behavior impacting them? My name is Brandon, I like to play the Wii. Brandon's pretty famous right now for saying it's no big deal whenever something happens. And that's something that we taught him to cope with those challenges. Every year I think we push Brandon on some phobia and some fear and he always comes out on top. You're going to lose. Do you think you can do that with decimals? Let's go ahead and do this problem today, please. How do we say that first number? 32 and one. Tenth. Tenth. Times. Times eight. Tenths. Tenths. Good job. All right. I am Brandon's general education teacher. He's in my classroom 80% of the time. 20% um, of the time he's in special education. He really loves math. Anything on the computer. I could see him just continuing his love for computers and just being a whiz on the computer. He's a very good speller. <laughs> He's a very good reader. It's the comprehension side of reading that is a little more difficult, especially as books are getting more challenging and there's a lot more inferring. But my expectations for him in the classroom are just like everyone else's and he really rises to the challenge. Go ahead. Show us where your next room is. Yeah. Show them the way. Yeah. It's a yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Brandon is only in the special education classroom for 30 minutes of reading instruction and 30 minutes of social skills instruction. So to work on that social emotional um, behavior piece. He now is working on over the last year having a conversation and being able to start a conversation with his peers and to carry on the conversation, how to appropriately end it and not just get up and walk away or say I'm done. What highlight? We're gonna highlight. You got it. Brandon's the only student I've ever had in 22 years to start from kindergarten through fifth grade. He's grown a lot from this little kiddo that didn't talk a whole lot, just trying to get him to work and stuff, and then to this guy that who now he talks and he'll have a conversation with you and he'll ask you questions, uh, greets you every morning. It'll be amazing to watch him over the next seven years to see what he does for sixth through 12th grade. Maybe three. We know he's going to have limitations. We just don't know, obviously, what all those will be in long term. What happens when we're gone? Mm -hmm. um, what will he do once, once we're not around anymore? That also makes me emotional. That's what keeps me up at night, is what happens when we're gone. Not the best for the bowl of spaghetti. He has two amazing siblings, but that's a lot of pressure to put on a, a sibling, too. So um, we want Brandon to be as independent as possible. Brandon has changed our lives and he's had a, a huge impact on us and I think we've both found a strength that we didn't know that we had. We just hope that by raising awareness and telling our story that people will just be a little more kind, that they will be a little bit more understanding for those who are different from them. And even though Brandon struggles with speech and he struggles with social skills, he wants the same things that we do. Sometimes it is really, really hard, but sometimes it's also just amazing because I feel like we really have an idea of what's really important in life. And sometimes it's not all that superficial stuff. And if people could understand that, then um, I guess we've done our job. Is it done?
This program is part of the Move to Include initiative, made possible with support from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people. The Max and Helen Guernsey Charitable Foundation, in support of educational programming on statewide Iowa Public Television.